This time we've got a pretty tricky deck to play. Oil Rogue. This is a deck that I wouldn't say I'm entirely proficient with yet. Uh, worth mentioning, one of the pros of this deck is that it's rather cheap to get constructed together. Uh, the only two legendaries are Loseb, which is from Nax Ramus, and Blood Mage Thelnus. A lot of people often ask what a good replacement for Blood Mage Thelnus is, and a good replacement is any of the cards that I will rattle off as other alternatives for this deck. Um, some people first look at this deck and wonder, two sprint, is that really necessary? Seems like a lot. Uh, turns out, yes, every single copy of Oil Rogue uses two sprint. So Oil Rogue, the concept of the deck is it uses really efficient removal, for example, backstab, deadly poison, eviscerate, in order to efficiently deal with minions on the board at a lower cost. It uses efficient minions like SI7 agent for that same thing. Uh, you can get a lot of value with the Chief Spells in conjunction with Violet Teacher, in conjunction with Azure Drake, which is both a card to draw more cards and also affects so many of the spells in this deck. One of the most noble cards in this deck is, of course, the card which this deck is named after, the Tinker Sharp Sword Oil, which not only immediately does 6 damage if you combo it and attack with something, uh, but it sets up for Blade Flurry, which does a lot of area of effect damage and also to the opponent's face. Uh, Blade Flurry really good with the deadly poison and the oil. Usually this deck will just try to control the board until late game it gets a minion on the board and then it plays uh, oil, attacks for whatever, and then Blade Flurries usually for the finish. Cards that can be in the deck as well include but are limited to, uh, there are actually quite a few cards, uh, Shiv, Goblin Auto Barber, Earthen Ring Farseer, another copy, another copy of Antique Killbot, uh, another Piloted Shredder, Sludge Belcher, even Dr. Boom sometimes makes an appearance in these. Um, other cards that were seen every once in a while were also Edwin Von Cleef and Emperor Thorsen. It was decided that General consensus, Emperor Thorisan, even though it seems like a really good card, doesn't quite fit. The cards in this deck are already low cost enough, and you often don't have that many cards to reduce with the big Emperor. And Edwin Van Cleef is certainly an option. Turns out that the Piloted Shredder kind of takes the er Edwin Van Cleef spot as something that's more sturdy and consistent, but nothing wrong with an Edwin Van Cleef. Also, in my brief teaching series where Mr. Yagoot, a great rogue player, taught me, uh, he was using a version with Assassin's Blade, which is also a card uh, sometimes in this deck, uh, with specifically the two goblin auto barbers as well. So, game plan of this deck is rather simple. Efficiently remove the minion, step one. Step two, you draw a bunch of cards, usually with Azure Drake or Sprint. And step three, you attack for a lot of damage with Oil, and then Blade Flurry. And you kill him. However, this is an aggressive matchup. So in this matchup, you're pretty much just trying to survive and... Um, what else is there to say here? You're pretty much going to try to survive. If you can survive, then you usually just outvalue them, I suppose would be the term. This type of deck is actually really scary because they can run you down quickly enough before you get anything going. Uh, often with this deck, planning one turn ahead is required. Also, oftentimes you want to make sure that the knife is used really well. Um, it is said that good management of this dagger is a key part of this deck. So I do want to combo this, so I'm going to just set up the dagger this turn. Uh, plan to Deadly Poison and SI7 Agent the next turn. Which is a little slow and I'm taking a lot of damage, but maybe it's possible to stabilize if the opponent doesn't have too good a turn this turn. Alright, and that wasn't a great turn. 
SI7 agent is one of your best friends against aggressive decks. Even better when you're going second, of course, and then a very, very strong opening turns out to be coin SI7 or backstab SI7. I'm usually good form with this deck to keep a 1 durability or 2 durability if possible dagger around and the reason for that is you save it for a blade flurry which is bound to come up someday like now One of the big strengths of this deck is the Violet Teacher, um, against aggressive decks especially. If you can control the board in any fashion, this thing, well, really against any deck, this thing gets so much value. It just continues to teach the students. Fan Knives is a great card against Paladin. I'm ready to Instruction begins. One of the things that's a little bit unfortunate about Oil is if you have it with the teacher, uh, the teacher will spawn a student first and then the Oil might land on the spawn student. Which means you sometimes miss lethal because of it. But that's not a reason not to run Violet Teacher, it's so strong. Opening game mulligans generally are you're searching for the early game uh, backstabs, stabby poisons. SI7 agents uh, against decks that you against decks that are likely aggressive. Um, only against specifically warrior, you might want to think about keeping a card like Sprint. Uh, preparation is generally kept as well. The Blood Mage Thalnos is one of those cards which is kind of utility card, which is why I generally don't recommend just replacing it with Loot Hoarder or with Cobalt Geomancer because even though it seems like those two cards kind of fit in the theme, um, Blood Mage Thalnos is just a utility card which ends up filling a lot of roles. So anyways, against the aggressive deck, step one is just to stabilize and step two is generally use your stabilized minions to kill the opponent. Uh, trying to find something to combo the SI7 agent with. Looks like not yet. Can combo with preparation, but nothing good to prepare right now. Uh, it's important to look ahead a turn. In this case, I think I can attack because it seems like I'll have... No, I'm actually not going to. The reason not to attack is you often need to look ahead a turn and see whether or not you're going to spend the mana for that turn. And if the answer is yes, then you don't attack because it costs the precious two mana to equip a full knife. Preparation Sprint is a very common play with this deck. Take a moment to plan out your next turn because it matters on whether or not this dagger is used. There's so many cards that I can't possibly imagine that I can actually spare the two mana from Dagger Mastery. So the big card that we're looking for is Deadly Poison in order to make the Blade Flurry very good. 
Uh, currently, there's no deadly poison to be found, so uh, it's kind of a game of stalling until we find one. This is probably a mirror entity and is going to hurt a lot when it's triggered. The thing that it would hurt least on is either anti kill bot or SI7 agent. A very big problem currently. I'll uh, choose to play the heal bot as a way to kind of survive and also give him not a great menu. The Lothev is one of the cards that is going to just completely make you want to tear out your hair sometimes in a deck with so heavy a spell requirement. So that is 12 damage, a fireball is going to uh, be lethal for us. Fortunately, he doesn't have it. Scary Dr. Boom instead. Sometimes with this deck, you're going to have to uh, imagine the best case scenario, uh, especially when you have sprint and you're trying to top deck something. Uh, when you're staring down such a bad s situation, you have to uh, just think of the best case. And in this case, the best case would be something like Deadly Poison. So and this is the only draw which would allow you to also play Blade Flurry and Deadly Poison. So... That is not going to be good enough. Or will it? Hmm. That will not be good enough. I'm sorry. Well, with this deck in the early game. You're looking for, um, against almost anything that isn't something you assume to be a control deck, like a warrior. Uh, you're just looking for the early game backstab, SI7 agent, deadly poison. Um, with the coin, the SI7 agent is especially good. Preparation is a, also a great card to keep. Um, preparation Fana Knives can be a very big tempo swing. And against aggressive decks, it's all about keeping them in check with your tempo. Oh, that's a really good card for him to get. But, thankfully, sometimes as a rogue, you have really good answers. Um, backstab. SI7 agent is often one of the dreamiest ones. Hey, lights out. As that is likely a mirror entity. Uh, there's two main choices. One is to play the SI7 agent, but I think the battle cry is good. Uh, the plan is generally. Uh, my plan is going to be to try to combo the SI7 agent onto one of his minions and then trade the 3-3 into my own SI7 agent to break this hey, lights out. mirror entity. Um, you kind of fall into a flow once you play enough oil rogue. Against aggression it's a constant fight for survival and You just hang in there until hopefully your draw kicks in like Sprint and Azure Drake. Preparation fan flurry and clear the board, but that's a little too much. And unfortunately, the mirror entity uh, handcuffs a bit. It might just be preparation fan SI7. Violet Teacher, preparation fan. Uh, Violet Teacher with preparation is often very good, but giving the Tempo Mage, which has a lot of spells, 
the Violet Teacher is not very fun. Uh, with the Blade Flurry, though, I suppose that will be a reasonable. Play. I'm ready to learn. Um, worth noting, uh, now that I've played Violet Teacher and that I used to have a backstab, if you happen to have Violet Teacher, a very good play is often to avoid backstabbing um, to see if you can make it to Violet Teacher and then backstab so you can get a free 1-1. One, one. Uh, I would not have given the opponent a Violet Teacher if I hadn't had Blade Flurry in hand as a way to deal with a lot of small 1-1s one -ones easily. Sapping this should work. It's one of the biggest cards uh, that would be in that deck. And perhaps more important, it enables the combo. Pay attention, class. Hey, lights out. This deck often plays the role of control when you're up against an aggressive deck. It makes the assumption that in the late game it will be able to overpower the opponent due to Efficient clears with Blade Flurry, uh, due to card draw with Azure Drake and Sprint. When it comes down to the late game, usually it's best to be able to play all the cards that are relevant and then play a Sprint. Um, good old Lotheb, always there to block, a very annoying card. Very important to not swing the knife uh, because the two mana it takes to make a knife is pretty difficult to come through in a deck that's always starved for mana. You have to look at your mana and see whether or not it's reasonable to spend two mana on a knife later. Huh, face. Okay, another Violet Teacher. That'll be... Oh. Deckhand first uh, to possibly trigger the Mirror Entity. And then 404. <laughs> this time it's Counterspell. Pay attention, class. Running program. Hug. Unless it's Duplicate. It's Counterspell. All of these cards are currently a little too good to uh, play in order to set up Counterspell. Uh, it's worth considering the Blade Flurry though. In fact, uh, that's fine, he's running low on cards, and I have a second copy of Blade Flurry. It does also summon a guy, which is a little known interaction. Um, the plan is to be able to Preparation Sprint the next turn, and then be able to play whatever extra. Would have been nice if the teacher had stuck around. Here 
near the end game, and this game has gone on pretty long for a uh, game against an aggressive deck. This one's a little less aggressive because it's running a card like Flame Strike. Um, lethal can come out from pretty far away. Uh, the cards to always look for are Oil in conjunction with Blade Flurry. Can really do a surprising amount of damage. One more sprint will draw out most of the cards in the deck. That card is important enough to remove, and... Hold the Deadly Poisoned Weapon, because that will be able to do uh, twice the amount of damage if Oil and Flurry go off on it. That's a 6 damage weapon, which if you just attack face with it, will deal 12 with Blade Flurry. That's 12 right there, and plus 4 is 16. That Dr. Boom is going to be very difficult to deal with. I think in this case a sap is fine, because uh, it's approaching end the game. One important thing also when you're playing this deck is to have a good idea of what's remaining in your deck because very often you'll go through quite a few of the cards and only have a few left. Um, in this case I know that they're the weapon uh, adjusting cards so I can make a plan to attempt to win the game through setting up two charges of the knife and then just trying to survive for a few more turns. So the plan is to deadly poison oil. Uh, if I get this weapon to 11 attack, then all I need to do in order to win is hit him with it once, and then blade flurry. Uh, 5, 8, I'm out of 1, 5, 8, 16, so I'm currently one off. Um, that would be 8, and then 16. Deadly, oil... Now in this case, I have no minions left, so it's just oil, oil. Eh, might as well toss the deadly poison on. Or one mana short of lethal. It was important to attack him because he could do a Frostbolt on the face. He needs to Fire Blast the Boombot to have a chance. That would have been a really good play. Hope for the 4, or the 3 damage. No, no, no the, the, only the 4 would work. Oh! I just realized that we could still lose. In fact, this is going to be a tie. Well, that's the game. Alright. Unless I get really lucky. Oops. Your soul shall be mine. Watch your back. As usual, fishing for the cheap cards. As always, kind of make the assumption that your opponent is playing the more aggressive type of deck when, it, when doing the mulligans. This one's going to be an interesting one, since uh, turn 2 tap means that he's either Handlock or Malagos. Or a bad zoo start. Okay. There's slight danger here, because the opponent could power overwhelming this and kill that, and that would be pretty sad. Um, I gave some consideration to passing, and then play Violet Teacher the next turn to coin Deadly Poison and guarantee two students, but it's overall better to just play out your threats. 
Um, a little tempting to play the second teacher, but instead I'll guarantee the student value now, I believe. Lock in the value here. Begin. One damage is worth it on this fellow. Since uh, the opponent doesn't have anything that looks like he can deal four damage yet. Uh, it's often good to keep the weapon at two durability if possible, so that an attack and a blade flurry the same turn as possible. Huh, this is where slight regrets occur. Pay attention, class. I shall do as you say to learn. This hand is really clunky right now, uh, with two sprints and just a assortment of cards, but maybe the Blade Flurry will carry the day. Maybe. Patience with the Blade Flurry is required. Um, there are pros and cons to killing the Kazan Mystic. One is that it actually removes something on the board, there's still something on the blade flurry. The con is that perhaps this is necessary in order to... Eh, I'm going to leave the weapon. It's overkilling the Kazan Mystic, and it's going to be possible to deal a lot more damage with oil and flurry if uh, the charge is kept. <laughs> Witness the power of Blade Flurry. Here we go. The light protects me. Get in there and fight, maggot! My shield for Argus! Three, seven damage, um... Probably don't die against whatever this deck has coming. Uh, Doomguard was also used. Um, that's 8 damage, so the deck just needs to find a way to deal uh, 4 damage through Taunt. Which can be tricky since I have almost nothing so far, but a sprint will hopefully find ways. Backstab will uh, move things along nicely. Oftentimes in the end game, you're just counting up reverse damage, which is to say, look up how much damage you have and then look up how much you need. So keep a running count. It's four more to win here. At this point, it's all about the stalling and the attempted finish. There's going to be two primary ways to win from here. One is to draw into the deck hand and then put an oil on it. Uh, that'll do a bunch of damage. The other is simply to hit him with four attack with this plus the oil and then eviscerate twice. Get in there and fight, maggot. Uh, the third way is to actually lethal uh, with sapping this and then playing oil, eviscerate, eviscerate, as I've been told. Uh, really easy to miss lethal, as you can see from the example. Anyways, uh, this will do though. So always be on the lookout. Ha, this guy's toast. Here we go. And keep that count going. That, that was 
to make sure that you were paying attention and that you were trying to count the legal, the lethal. Yes, 